Now, horror fans, they know what they like, they know what they don't like, and they can be very vocal when something doesn't live up to their expectations. But there's one thing that pretty much all horror hounds can agree that they hate, when a film is dull. Speaking of this, make sure you check out our original video for 10 horror movies everyone wished were way crazier. But this affliction is widespread in the genre, and therefore we have more movies to discuss. So let's dive in. I'm Adam, this is What Culture Horror, and here are 10 more horror movies everyone wished were way crazier. Number 10, Five Nights at Freddy's. After the better part of a decade in development, fans of the popular video game series Five Nights at Freddy's finally got to see the story play out on the big screen when this movie hit theatres in 2023. And it was fine, it was fine. With Josh Hutchison taking on the role of Fazbear's latest night guard, the film played out in a similar fashion to the first game. Hutchison has to survive encounters with evil animatronics whilst trying to discover their secret. The ideal location of a haunted pizzeria combined with the cast of memorable and unsettling characters should have made this a guaranteed scare fest. Instead, what played out was a thoroughly mediocre mainstream horror. As soon as it was revealed the film only carried a PG-13 rating, it was clear that the Five Nights at Freddy's name was being tacked on to make money, not to do the franchise any justice. The finished product was dull, confusing, and thoroughly unscary, which is actually quite impressive considering the source material. Oh well, maybe Blumhouse will get it right for the sequel, you know, if it ever comes out. Number 9, The Bye Bye Man. 2017's The Bye Bye Man was full of potential based on its supporting cast alone. I mean, where else are you going to find Doug Jones, Carrie Ann Moss, and Faye Dunaway all on the same bill? The titular character hangs heavy over this movie as a spectre who infects people's minds with thoughts of violence when they think or say his name. And if you think that sounds familiar to how the Stay Puff Marshmallow Man was created in Ghostbusters, then you'd be right. The premise of a group of protagonists having to fight off both a mysterious spirit and their own thoughts is strong, but the Bye Bye Man does nothing to expand upon it. The characters also come to the curse fairly easily, with no solution to their plight ever truly present. Whilst many are killed, the deaths are all pretty tame. Other movies have definitely done this concept better, which is a real shame as the Bye Bye Man had the potential to be really good, but that name could also maybe use some work. Number 8, The Open House. Instead of being a horror movie about the property market, which sounds absolutely terrifying, The Open House is a Netflix exclusive horror from 2018 about a young widow who agrees to move into her sister's secluded holiday home until it can be sold. Creepy house in the middle of nowhere occupied by a woman who's just experienced bereavement, what could possibly go wrong? Predictably, things go poorly for the widow and her son when they become the target of a serial killer who specifically targets open house events. His identity is never revealed, so how does the movie refer to such a frightening figure? The Evil Boots. Right. As well as the main villain being defined by his shoes, the film also suffers from being cliched as hell. The slow burn towards the reveal is so formulaic that it needed something spectacular to be worth it. Unfortunately, all audiences got were a pair of killer wellies. Whilst it could have been even more cliched by going down the supernatural route, maybe a few ghouls and ghosts was exactly what this decidedly run-of-the-mill outing needed. Don't bother putting in an offer on this one. Number 7. The Beast Must Die the annoying thing about The Beast Must Die is that it had the potential to be really interesting. A millionaire gathers six apparently ordinary people to his countryside mansion, only to boldly announce that he suspects one of his guests is a werewolf. Strange, but at least is a good conversation starter. This 1974 flick is mainly known for the so-called werewolf break towards the end, where audiences are invited to pause for 30 seconds and announce who they think the secret beast is. A novel approach, albeit one that didn't catch on at all. All, but it's just a shame that the rest of the film couldn't match up to this level of weird. Before the werewolf break, The Beast Must Die is nothing special, a plodding, uninteresting whodunit with some supernatural elements sprinkled in to keep things from getting really stale. Not even appearances from Peter Cushing and Michael Gambon keep it from being a bore, as by the time the break comes around, most people will likely have nodded off. What's worse is that there's a cut of the movie that removes the werewolf break entirely, aka the only interesting thing about it. Number 6. Final Exam 
In 1980s Britain, moral panic about horror movies and their effect on the nation's youth led to dozens of low-budget horrors being given the now infamous label of Video Nasty. Films such as The Last House on the Left, I Spit on Your Grave and Cannibal Holocaust all passed into legend as too depraved for human consumption, which ironically made them even more appealing. Nowadays, Video Nasties have a special place in horror history, so imagine how deflated you'd be watching this one and be bored to tears. Years. Final Exam from 1981 is set on a high school campus and gives a cast of teens the task of evading a mysterious killer before they all go home for the summer. As well as being highly derivative of other slashes from the time, Final Exam isn't half as scary or bloody as those ones, and yet it was still somehow banned as a video nasty, in the same category as The Texas Chainsaw Massacre and The Hills Have Eyes. If you're expecting something on the same level as those two, then prepare to be disappointed. Pointed. Now I want to know from you, yes you the viewer of this video, what is one horror movie that you really went into thinking oh this is going to be great, I'm going to be really scared, I'm going to have such a good time and then you were bored to tears. Please do let us know in the comments down below and while you're there make sure you give us a like and a subscribe. Alright now back to the list. Number 5. Maximum Overdrive for his one and only directorial effort, Stephen King got behind the camera in 1986 to make a version of his own story, Trucks, which became the film Maximum Overdrive. The movie is set in a world where a comet causes all of Earth's machines to come to life, but not in a fun Transformers way, in a murdery run for your life way. Considering the pedigree involved in this production, you'd think this would have been the most twisted, mentally scarring motion picture ever created, yet somehow it was a pile of dung. First of all, it's hard to make arcade games and vending machines into villains without drifting into parody, and whilst he is a master of the written word, King could not direct for love nor money. As a result, Maximum Overdrive is a complete mess, with none of the usual King intrigue to hold it together. Number 4. The Wicker Tree Robin Hardy's The Wicker Man is widely regarded as one of the best British horror movies ever made, and as the shining example of the folk horror subgenre. Set on a remote Scottish island, a mainland policeman gets more than he bargains for when he investigates the disappearance of a girl, as he falls foul to the inhabitants' pagan ways. Over half a century on from its release, The Wicker Man is still talked about by fans old and new. What's not discussed nearly as much is its sequel. Once again directed by Hardy, 2011's The Wicker Tree is pretty much exactly the same as its predecessor, only much, much worse. None of the fantastic world building and tension crafting from the first film is here. It just retreads the same ground its older sibling did in the 1970s, only this time everyone knew what was coming. This was Hardy's final film project before his death in 2016, leaving a tragic stain on his legacy that will sadly never be erased. Much like its namesake, any remaining copies of The Wicker Tree should be burnt immediately. Number 3. The Happening M. Night Shyamalan has been called many things over the years, but very rarely has he been called boring. Even his most ridiculous films have something outlandish to cling to, with the exception of this 2008 release starring Mark Wahlberg and Zoe Deschanel as a couple trying to keep their children safe during a global outbreak of mass suicide. As with all of Shyamalan's projects, The Happening contains a big twist that is about to be spoiled, so look away now if you don't want to know. Marky Mark discovers midway through the movie that the suicides are being caused by plants. Yep, plants. Tired of being stepped on by humanity, figuratively and literally, the world's flora has developed a toxin that causes people to go crazy, leading to the apocalypse. So what are the characters meant to do about that? Pluck each individual blade of grass from the ground? Get a cow? It may have been unexpected, but the plant twist doesn't do anything to make the happening compelling. Somehow a movie about millions of people killing themselves is flat and uninspiring. Number 2. The Woman in Black, Angel of Death Possibly to stop everyone from asking him, are you the Harry Potter guy for the rest of his life, Daniel Radcliffe's first major film role after hanging up his glasses was the lead in 2012's The Woman in Black. Based on the book of the same name, the movie, which saw Radders being pursued by a vengeful ghost lurking in an old house, cast the young star in a completely different light and earned a reputation as one of the scariest big time horror movies in years. And then came the sequel. As well as losing Radcliffe, The Woman in Black Angel of Death also went ahead without original direction director James Watkins or screenwriter Jane Goldman. All of this cost the movie dearly, as when the reviews came out, they were pretty bleak. 
Angel of Death would have been boring anyway, but the fact that it was being compared to such a chilling predecessor did it no favours. Critically and commercially, the film flopped, and there has been no word from the woman in black ever since. Now let's spare a thought for Phoebe Fox, who had the unenviable task of following Radcliffe as the film's star. Number 1. Annabelle Take a tried and tested horror formula, The Haunted Doll, and throw in some exposure from an existing successful franchise, and what do you get? Well, if you're Annabelle, then you get a criminally underwhelming cinema experience. After first cropping up in The Conjuring, this petrifying plaything got her own movie in 2014, with part of her backstory taking centre stage. Annabelle comes to life here after a cult member kills herself whilst holding a porcelain doll, transferring her soul into the toy. Then the story plays out as you'd expect. The owners get haunted, the doll gets its revenge, all home in time for tea. What could have been a genuinely creepy affair, a more sinister modern update of Child's Play played out like every other horror movie you've ever seen. Annabelle relied way too heavily on its main character, thinking she would be enough to carry the rest of the film. Sadly, this was not the case, and everyone was forced to sit through a movie as stiff as the doll herself before it got possessed. But then again, Annabelle got a prequel and a sequel, so maybe there's more to it than what we realise.